you Zabu. I'm sure most of you have been wondering what brands have to say about the future of sponsorships in India, especially in these uncertain times. I won't leave you any longer in anticipation and let's get straight into the first panel for the evening. Our first panel is on sponsorship trends in FMCG sector and moderating the session is Neil Pandya, Head of Media at L'Oreal. Neil has over 12 years of extensive experience in digital and traditional media marketing, working in the FMCG, telecom marketing and advertising industry. He has won several accolades like winner of India's Top 40 Under 40 Disruptive Minds and winner of the Great Visionary Award 2019. But before I hand it over to the moderator of the session, I'm also going to welcome the panelist for this session. Samyukta Ganesh, Head Marketing Baskin Robbins. Jai Kishin Chapru, Head Media and PR ITC Limited. Rajiv Dubey, Head of Media Dabur India Limited. And Hitesh Ahuja, Founder and CEO Yamlin. So now, over to you Neil. esteemed senior leadership panel so it's going to be a difficult job for me to moderate and cover rich experience of all of them in the next 30 40 minutes i'll try my best to stick to the relevant topics for the audience and that brings me to all the listeners who are listening to us today uh, a big hello from our end stay tuned for the next 30 40 minutes because there is power pack knowledge sharing happening across your favorite brands in the country uh, coming to the panels, which I was referring to earlier, I have, uh, I'm really happy to be part of this panel discussion because uh, the mix of panel is really unique. We have marketing head representation in the form of Samyukta. We have like a CEO and a founder representation in the form of Mr. Hitesh. We have brand side media experts representation like Rajiv, Jaikishan and myself. So we have covered the ground across all the field. So let me not waste any further time and get started with today's panel topic, which is about trends in sponsorship uh, in the FMCG sector during and post COVID. Uh, let me get started with two gentlemen in the panel who are, who are the first and the last guys in any organization to get across any sponsorship related conversation. That's Rajiv and Jai Kishan. Uh, let me start with Rajiv first. Rajiv, uh, uh, let us know your experience in pandemic. Has the marketing budgets dropped or, you know, post, uh, po post this pandemic, most of us will be really efficient in terms of spending our media monies. So will you stick around sponsorships or will you go back to regular inventory buying? And just briefly, if you can take us through any sponsorship journey of yours, which you have associated with Dabur. Sure. So first of all, you know, uh, as far as the marketing budgets, you know, so uh, uh, I personally feel that this is the best time to advertise, you know, because uh, the viewership is up, uh, the media is cheap, and uh, uh, and people are at home, but nothing to do. So the best time to advertise, you know. Although I mean, uh, lots of populations started working now, but still, you know, uh, people aren't meeting each other, and they are still uh, they're stuck to TV right now. Exactly. So it's best time to advertise, best time to uh, spend your uh, marketing budgets. Uh, that's uh, the first part of the question. The second part of the question was about uh, whether one should uh, uh, invest in sponsorships at the moment. You know, so uh, if you look at what is available today, the, what is available today is, is very little in terms of sponsorship. You know, there's hardly anything available right now. And uh, typically, how uh, media owners uh, sell sponsorship is that you know something uh, which is uh, uh, very very expenses to, to produce, for example, that uh, comes for sponsorship. Something which is uh, uh, not so expensive to produce, uh, they never put it on a, on a sponsorship. So right now we have an opportunity to look at something which is uh, not so expensive to produce and still available to you for a sponsorship. So those options exist right now and going forward is going to be a, a, a very different uh, phenomenon from next week when the markets open up and uh, you start getting the fresh content, which will probably deliver and probably will not deliver. Probably will deliver something like uh, what the existing programs are delivering at a much higher cost. So it's going to be very, very, uh, uh, it's going to be, there, there's going to be a lot of tussle between uh, advertisers and the uh, media owners uh, in, uh, in the times to come. Having said that, I mean, still uh, that doesn't take away uh, the fact that uh, uh, one of the best times to advertise it. One of the best times to reach out to people 
uh, in the current scenario. I, I think uh, uh, any, any of any of your sponsorships which you are really happy to associate and want to take it forward. Yeah. So uh, once the uh, original content starts, uh, we uh, we have been backing uh, uh, big boss uh, sponsorships across different regions. So we will uh, uh, look at it depending on uh, what uh, what's the offer on the table, and uh, that's something you know. Uh, uh, has a lot of stickiness and uh, people uh, uh, watch it regularly for over 105 days uh, in his pocket. So that's that's going to be something, uh, I mean, one can have a conversation on this depending on how things work out in the market. Interesting. I, I will echo that thing because we are also part of the same uh, sponsorship for a long period now. Uh, I'll go to Jai Kishan now. Jai Kishan, I mean, uh, you know, Rajiv rightly said that it's the best time. Things are available and cheap. People are watching a lot of television. What's the scenario for your respective organization? Has, again, the marketing budgets dropped or you have increased? And what? And you have a lot of essential products also. So what's, what's your take in terms of sponsorship for, from your organization? Okay, uh, see, uh, from the current pandemic perspective, I think uh, there was an impact on budgets uh, because some of the key core brands that normally get advertised during the summer period, whether it is uh, deodorants or juices, uh, they kind of uh, stopped. And uh, because the focus was completely on essentials uh, and the spends were kind of uh, prioritized on uh, essentials. So uh, thankfully, we also managed to have some new launches uh, within the essentials category, whether it was in form of a savon disinfectant spray or the wipes or the liquid uh, hand sanitizer. And those launches have been treated as regular launches, albeit with uh, uh, limited choice of medium, with no press, no out of home, uh, no radio. And within uh, television as well, you know, uh, with restrictions with regards to uh, limited content on GC that was available. Uh, yeah, but nonetheless, you know, uh, overall, we believe that we've uh, been able to kind of create an impact for most of the launches for the sheer fact that people were hooked up to, uh, to their television sets and they were kind of consuming con uh, whatever content was coming in primarily either it was through news or movies and a bit of GC. So, uh, the, uh, the budgets have been kind of uh, cut, but at the same time, we managed to kind of have some successful launches as well. With regards to sponsorships, uh, at a personal level, I'm not too much of an advocate for uh, pumping in a significant chunk of money on sponsorships. Uh, I'll detail it uh, later with some other questions, but uh, in the current phase, I'm not looking at any sponsorships as such. We're just kind of focusing on uh, increasing our uh, visibility, uh, having a better SOV and a higher share of GRPs. And I'm interesting. I think two set of different answers from uh, uh, two two advertisers in the industry. I we heard interesting answers from media experts in the on the brand side. Let me go on to the other side, uh, which are the brand experts, largely the marketing heads and uh, the CEO. I mean, let me go to Samyukta and Hitesh. Uh, start with Samyukta. Samyukta, largely, if you would have, you know, all of us have seen that there are multiple brands which are built on sponsorship, be it a cricket sponsorship, be it a rea reality show sponsorship, or be it some on-ground sponsorship. What's your take uh, in terms of sponsorship uh, and brand building as an exercise, and what is your choice of sponsorships and going forward? Okay. So, uh, thanks, Neil. That's an interesting and very layered question. So I'll break it up to answer. Uh, I think uh, a lot of it depends on uh, a your brand, your TG. Uh, it also depends on your objective for the brand at that given point in time. I mean, you guys are the media experts, so you all know better how every campaign is planned. So, for example, if there is some research that comes back saying that uh, you know we are not appealing to men, and uh, say more women are interested in the brand, and you want to reach a reach a larger target audience, that's more skewed towards men than women, uh, probably an IPL will be a great great place to start and the easiest way to reach out to that, that audience set. Uh, for example, you want to reach out to more women, you might end up like, you know, sponsoring some uh, music event or riding on, uh, you know, something on those lines um, and so on and so forth. So I think it's very contextual and dependent on um, what you want to do uh, and what's the objective at that point in time. Uh, so I think my choice, if I were to get into any kind of sponsorship deal at all, uh, would largely depend 
depend on that and obviously it will also depend on what kind of budgets you have so whether you want to be the primary sponsor or you want to you know latch on to what is going on so i think yeah that's la- largely where my, my view would come from here okay uh, i mean interesting point of view because it's it's re- very relevant that you know we should have a objective to test before you get into nd sponsorship so i think that's rightly said uh, by samyukta uh, let me go to hitesh hitesh you mentioned about uh, you know uh, your brand is available nationally regionally and in certain regions it is also uh, uh, it's it's a stronger part in a priority markets for your particular brand do you believe that uh, chasing national sponsorship it's a good idea or going and chasing regional sponsorship is a great idea uh um. well uh, yeah so neel we are uh, we are actually uh, available in bangalore pune and hyderabad uh, so in ma- in many ways this is a a very regional brand yeah. uh, clearly from a from a uh, uh, because we are a young uh, digital first uh, focused uh, uh, made for millennials uh, pre 30 consumption uh, sort of basket uh, uh, i think uh, uh, the 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 field is wide open post covid which which means uh, you know the 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 recall factor which which a trust of a print or outdoor or some of the other uh, other conventional channels uh, have now been replaced with a mobile screen uh, uh, and uh, and and that's where yamlin or or any rather emerging brands uh, come on a come on more or less the equal pedestal uh because there is definitely not much uh not much a consumer who sees can generate trust beyond a point uh because of the because of the sheer uh, you know you can't really outdo uh, a marketing budget on a, on a digital uh, beyond a certain point so so from a to answer your question with respect to uh, regional versus national i think uh, uh clearly uh, it's it's as hyper local as it gets uh and uh, digital allows you to go hyper local uh it it probably breaks the city down also within within the city you could Just you could uh, you could also come up with uh, you know clusters or, and and device campaigns around it we are doing that in uh, in facebook with uh, with our primary tg of uh, bachelors first jobbers young pgs uh and and only going to a certain sector or a cluster within bangalore or pune so so i think uh, uh, using sponsorship intelligently uh, uh, and uh, to samyukta's point uh, knowing your tg and then devising a plan which is more hyper local customized uh, will will probably open up more opportunities uh, and and uh, will need definitely uh, a, a lot of new thinking uh, to go into play uh you know i i was also thinking about this point you know how uh, how big boss has gone regional and how kbc has gone regional and that that could be one of the possibility why a lot of regional sponsorships are also uh, increasing in terms of viewership and in terms of more attraction of brands also uh, that brings me again to our two experts on media uh, on the panel uh, rajiv and jaykishan let me start with jaykishan this time first uh, jaykishan most of your brands today uh, have a good recall and a spawned awareness value so and all of us know that when we see uh, uh, deliverables in any of the sponsorship a lot of deliverables are like you know brand presence logo presence xyz do you really feel such deliverables are very hygiene and should not be part uh, of any uh, costing to it or it's more about looking into brand integration into the sponsorship you know the take it or leave it kind of attitude should be gone or it's it's more about how working together with the channel and a brand what's your perspective uh, i think i'll probably take a bit uh, long to re- uh, respond to this question because uh, you know most of the stuff uh, that we're talking about and probably when i started my career way back in 96 97 uh and i think rajiv would uh, definitely take over with it uh, with doordarshan being the uh, uh, lead channel at that point of time it was a far simpler life when it came to sponsorships and uh, deliverables uh, then to cut to a scenario in 2000 odd when uh, uh, star came in and i remember 2000 odd uh, i was a first sponsor on uh, kbc with doordarshan and life was much simpler because you know you kind of associate with one property and you kind of get a lot of goodies in terms of uh, 
26 weeks of sponsorship on three top shows. You get some integrations and uh, so on and so forth. <clears throat> In the last 10 years, uh, it's things have completely changed. Anything that can be monetized has been monetized. And trust me, an, a, any additional opportunity to monetize anything else uh, uh, would end up uh, kind of getting monetized. So what technically happens is there's a significant squeeze uh, for the deliverables for the uh, for the brand that is actually uh, sponsoring the world. What effectively you, you get at the end of it is effectively besides the naming rights a few mentions here and there, some product placements, at best two or three integrations, honestly. So I have also associated with uh, <clears throat> uh, Big Boss, uh, I think season nine and 10, I was a, a presenting sponsor with a kind of uh, outlay that we talk about, which sits in excess of 250 million. Uh, you, you only kind of get two uh, integrations and if you kind of uh, push your luck, you might get a third integration. That's about it. Okay. Uh, one trivia for everyone. We know that Siddharth Shukla won the last big war. Do you remember which was the presenting uh, sponsor? Likewise on IPL, we are all avid uh, lovers of IPL. We watch 60 plus days of cricket. Do we even, uh, can we name uh, three brands that are on the chess jerseys of three teams? So, you know, are we kind of uh, unnecessarily gunning for uh, a so-called uh, sponsorship right, right here or uh, are we kind of uh, doing something for the brand? So today, if I want an integration on any, any of the shows, irrespective of me being a sponsor or no, uh, I still manage to get it. There are, uh, there are various other ways in terms of trying to create the desired impact that a sponsorship for you at much lower cost. And I think that's that's what we need to kind of uh, uh, focus on. Uh, okay. Unless there is a strong synergy that one can see in terms of the sponsorship. So whether it is uh, equivalent, or you actually mentioned KB Sensing, uh, the seamlessness of Cadbury's uh, uh, moment or the ICICI bank check that uh, the uh, host signs up. These are the kind of integrations that uh, cut in very, very uh, seamlessly and not a situation wherein uh, some senior dignitary is going on the dais to give away one award and just the, uh, some celebrity mentioning his name or the company's name or Babaji coming in and do multiple shows and kind of dancing with the kids and all. I, I don't think that's a seamless sponsorship. So that, that's where I said I would kind of uh, have a cut in terms of uh, not looking at sponsorships without a strong fitment for a brand. So do we do sponsorships? Yes, we do sponsorships. We probably do not go with high ticket activities like a KBC or an IPL or something. In regionals or even in Hindi, we have kind of uh, dabbled with sponsorships which have kind of had a strong fitment and a seamless uh, uh, integrations that have kind of come in uh, with, with a strong message coming in. So I think that's that's where I would kind of uh, uh, pass this particular question. I think, uh, Jay Kishan, I echo your previous answer to the second answer to in terms of how strong belief you have in terms of what exactly a brand needs as a deliverable from a sponsorship. Let me go to Rajiv. Rajiv, I, I mean, you have I have seen a lot of your brands part of multiple sponsorship. And I, I believe somewhere being a media expert, you will also feel that you need to be more uh, integrated into the show. Uh, there are AFPs available because but that that becomes really expensive for a brand to yeah. do it. But how? Do, what's your point of view in terms of how a brand should rightly associate to a sponsorship? Actually, you know, it's a uh, it's not a uh, straight uh, it's not a straight answer. I mean that whether should you or should you not. Uh, I can talk about brands which are say uh, newer brands and which need to establish. Those kind of brands, you know, it really helps if you could associate with a show like uh, uh, you know in which which is a long uh, running show. Uh, which gets promoted very often and uh, you get a lot of mileage through uh, various uh, elements which you get on uh, on the screen, uh, various mentions which you get on the screen and uh, various integrations which you, which you get, uh, get on the screen. So this is about, about this, about, uh, I'm not talking about a, about a soap sponsorship uh, per se, you know. So if you were to sponsor a soap, for example, you know, you'll not get anything like that. You just get a logo somewhere exactly. and uh, no other mention anywhere. So that's something, you know, that's something which is not desirable so much. However, a show like, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, a big boss something, or, or say something like that, you know, which has a presence for 105 days, there's a pre build up, there is a uh, telecast for about one and a half hours every day, there's a repeat telecast of another one and a half hours. So you have presence of about, about uh, roughly about three hours in a day, plus uh, a big promotion. It basically helps a new brand or a brand which is struggling brand to establish itself, you know. So that it does. 
if you were to look at say uh, uh, so what uh, what jeff is chan was was about about us say uh, a show or something like that something like you know award show or something so those kind of things you know that's something which is uh, totally avoidable because you know what it does is that it's it's accessible a lot of money for us for uh, these are not uh, easy one to buy and not not a cheap one to buy very expensive to buy and what you get is just logo here and there so those ones are uh, uh, totally avoidable uh, so uh, so i, I divided into three parts basically soaps uh, one day sponsorships and a, and the long run sponsorship and talking about sponsorship like ipl or something like that you know so that's something you know uh, sponsorship like ipl is uh, not bought for the sake of uh, brand building i would say it's, it's more of a ego of somebody knows who just buying the sponsorship you know so somebody says that i have to be present on ipl and hence i should buy the sponsorship so those kind of buy i don't know how uh, what kind of rub off a uh, 400 crore kind of a sponsorship generate for a uh, for a brand you know and what will be the roi for this so one has to have a very balanced approach look at uh, what uh, uh, i mean what this will drive for for your brand i have seen reasonable amount of success for my brands which ever have taken uh, the sponsorship uh, the uh, measure of that being sales you know there's nothing else to measure and uh, and wherever it is not work we have been very quick to withdraw and uh, do something else for that brand you know so uh, it's not an easy choice uh, because you know a lot of money commitment goes into this and uh, but if you're trying to drive something if you try want to drive a very strong message then it's a very good option to look at uh, depending on you know uh, but you have to monitor it very very closely you have to be at it and you have to try to drive each and every penny out of the sponsor that's uh, uh, very very important you know i i i very well said raju i think you divided the answer from a uh, uh, two types or three types of different sponsorship and how uh, every sponsorship have a better deliverable for the brand if the objective is defined nicely i mean let me i mean enough said on television sponsorships and other things let me let me go to the brand experts on the other side and uh, let me let me go to hitesh right now hitesh you know uh, there are we all know that a list brand ambassadors uh, are becoming really difficult to afford they are becoming really expensive to come on brand uh, do you feel sponsorships like movie tie ups or a cricketing event where a brand gets access to those uh, you know those celebrities or those ambassadors for a co branded tie up or a co branded uh, tvc or some kind of a stuff do you think those stuff are important for brand like yours or any other brands so i'll actually uh, i think it's a good question and i'll answer you on on some stuff we are doing with belief uh, maybe that that probably addresses the point uh, i agree uh, we don't uh, we don't come with marketing budgets uh, which cross uh, which which cross tens of crores forget hundreds of crores uh, so so one has to be one to rajiv's point one has to be uh, one has to be cognizant about uh, what's the channel what's the medium and uh, uh, i i also see uh, you know young brands uh, are at a very interesting stage in the in the digital era which we are uh, because the channels are slowly transienting to digital uh you know what we have done with respect to uh you know we we've caught on to the vocal for local uh tagline which the prime minister has come up with we've we've divided that vocal for local into you know artists who are regional artists uh in in different states of the country uh we've been able to uh you know use their use their fan following if it is if it is uh, a millions of star millions of followers which they have and using their content and their accessibility within those states uh along with uh, along with partnering so this is something which we are uh this is something which we are doing which also gives us you know uh, uh of course needless to say those artists have to be uh meeting our tg requirement uh those uh, so so this is something which is a pilot uh we are very gungo about uh you know approaching approaching the the you know consumers or or the first million consumers if we have to which is what we are targeting uh in in that fashion versus going down um going down a, a platform where you know brands which are power brands which is 500 crores and above brands who are who are using those channels which are more you know 
uh, more nationally viewed or nationally acceptable. So uh, I, I, I don't know if that answered the way we are approaching it, uh, which also means that, uh, you know, uh, uh, going, going to the relevant set of people, crafting a different, uh, you know, IP, if you will, uh, and uh, approaching sports, approaching music, approaching different uh, platforms available uh, by creating digital IPs. Uh, I, I think you rightly said from a perspective what Raju also mentioned earlier that uh, how uh, how are different brands with affordability with 500 crore plus kind of a budget to a brand uh, who do not have those level of affordability and what are the choices they are making in terms of sponsorship. Let me come to Samyukta. Samyukta, I mean, uh, if I can either continue the same question which I asked with uh, Hitesh, uh, it is more on the lines which if you... Uh, it's about how how are you looking at other sponsorships like movie brand uh, association or a cricket association and in those sponsorship if you get you know access to those celebrities is that a good clue for you to go to that particular sponsorship or you are really happy with the other sites which are re regularly available on television and other ways um so yeah i think um Neil, even on a question like this, again, I'm going to come back to saying it all depends on uh, what your brand's requirements uh, are. And I think if I have to, uh, I think there are two ways to look at sponsorship in general. Uh, like I'm, maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but at least in my head, there are just two ways to look at sponsorship. Either you're the, uh, I think Jay Kishan mentioned it, saying that how many of us remember at least top three sponsors of every event. Uh, and I think that's very, very, very aptly put because um, either you are the primary sponsor and everybody remembers you for that event. So you, whether it's Lakme Fashion Week or Femina Miss India, like, you know, you get associated with the event. Uh, then it kind of makes sense too. Uh, but of course, like Rajiv said, that comes with really demand for very, very large uh, budgets. And then, uh, the ROI of something like that needs to be really, you know, you need to be very, very clear that what you're getting out of the entire deal. Uh, I think that's the best way to do it in a very ideal scenario, saying that, you know, you have everything going for you and therefore you, you can be the person associated with the event. Uh, if I think you can't be that person, I think then the only way to get it right is if you can think of something really out of the box that will uh, land home the message and help you get remembered without actually being associated with the event. So, because I think this uh, thing of going in between, you know, where you are neither here nor there, you get one logo mentioned, somebody does one little tweet about you. Um, I, I don't know if that's the right way to do because it's a lot of clutter. It's too many brands or too much of noise happening. Um, I think one apt example was when Coke was a sponsor and Pops, uh, you know, Pepsi said nothing official about it. Uh, suddenly, everybody remembers Pepsi for the event. You know? So I think when you can very cleverly use it, use an event to your advantage and uh, you know, think out of the box, or even when Bajaj said uh, you know, the official carrier for every Indian, instead of saying for the team itself, I think those kind of uh, ideas really hit home. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's my only point of view. Either you go like all guns blazing or you don't do it. I think you touched upon a very interesting point, which I'm going to take it from you to uh, Rajiv and Jai Kishan. That's about ROI. I mean, uh, Rajiv, Jai Kishan, I mean, we had living in a fact of attribution to anything which we have been spending. If you have to discuss attribution, it will take another panel of 30, 40 minutes to take forward. But if I have to ask you guys, I think Jai Kishan, you had you know, fair uh, point of views about what sponsorships and what not sponsorships. If I, if I have to ask both of you, how do you evaluate uh, a sponsorship? Do you, do, you, do, do you put a research behind that sponsorship and then you see the brand recalls or the spawned awareness or the brand imagery moving? Or do you really look at sales? What is the attribution parameters to any of the sponsorships which you have been doing? It? Raju, I'll start with you because you have been associated in multiple big sponsorships on the same lines. Yeah. So, you know, uh, at the first uh, uh, measurement is, is for business sale, you know, business. So, so that's the most important thing, you know, if, if, uh, if, if it is helping the brand in, in getting business and uh, 
if you see some positive positive traction in market in terms of uh, the uh, sponsor helping and helping you in distribution and uh, in driving sales and everything you should uh, definitely uh, go for it and then you know thereafter uh, the research reports and everything they come much later you know uh, very quick uh, way of judging it is you know what is happening in the market do you get a good uh, traction in the market or not so that's a, that's a first uh, 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 thing one one has to look at but you know if you if you seeing nothing is happening to the brand then it should quickly uh, one should be very quick to withdraw from the sponsorship and and do something else for the brand because you know if uh, uh, if you are spending money and it's not giving you anything then it's not worth it then you know then it should uh, uh, immediately go to the uh, producer and, and say that is not working for me and should get out this i'm talking about uh, mid level sponsorship or not talking about very big sponsorship like exactly. ipl and all that which are proven over the period you know and uh, you do get a, a recall but at a very very high cost uh, so that is something you know a company like ours uh, can uh, never uh, uh, look at that kind of option because you know our annual budgets are uh, uh, something like what the sponsorships cost so because you know we have smaller brands we have to divide everything in smaller brands we have to feed in each and every brand to uh, stand on its own and then you know uh, then um, uh, basically ensure that every brand gets a gets a, a standing in the marketplace so so that's that's how uh, it goes in our case you know i, I <laughs> it's a one of the point which you mentioned is it's is reality i mean danda kitna hua but mera distributor wants to go and watch it or my distributor gets some kind of a, it's it's an indirect relation to the sponsorship which brands are also picking it up jaykishan i think you mentioned clearly in the uh, in your previous answers about how sponsorship uh, how you look at sponsorships can you also touch upon uh, along with raji what he mentioned about attribution what's an agency's role in defining a sponsorship or selecting a sponsorship for the brand so i think uh, agency being the custodian for most of the brands uh, from media perspective uh, can kind of bring in a significant amount of science uh, to the uh, to the media and yastics and all and it's not that uh, uh, they are lacking in tools so i i do recollect way back in 2005 or 6 uh, we had attempted a model like this uh, to uh, evaluate the uh, and uh, the returns from uh, sponsorship and things so variety of things uh, that uh, go in a sponsorship whether it is a, a, a naming a product or placement of a product or how many times the brand features in so whether it's a cricket uh, live cricket match or a standard uh, high ticket sponsorship so we had attempted one excel uh, onto it so there was some thumb rule we said you know we'll take a 60% weightage out here 40% weightage weightage out here so on and so forth and a uh, few years back uh, when i was associated with uh, big boss uh, realized there's a company called repicom which currently is a part of nielsen i had kind of come and uh, refine this particular measurement uh, technique all together so you know at any given point of time you could pick up uh, you could actually uh, come to the R- uh, roi that you are getting from uh, any of the sponsorships uh, and because they used to take about 24 or 36 hours to uh, give you an update on a show like big boss so the response time was much faster as rajiv also rightly put out Standard yes, take it. The brand tracks and all. By the time the data comes in, your season two is ready to go on. Uh, coming back uh, to the agency part, I think yeah, the evalu the pre evaluation is significantly crit- uh, critical. If it is an established show or it's a, a repeat season of any of these uh, properties, it's fairly easy to kind of put a value to it and expect uh, what a uh, particular deliverable is going to uh, uh, give you uh, uh, do a return for you. if it's a new uh, new property if the format is known time slot is known you still kind of go ahead and uh, uh, try to evaluate it and all this needs to be done at an agency end uh, one portion out here is again you know because most of the agencies have a uh, uh, back end uh, tie up with most of the broadcasters at times uh, the intent uh, needs to be kind of uh, thought through rather than the push from the agency in terms of pushing a particular sponsorship can i add to this yes please yeah you know so so uh, so my experience has been that agencies are uh, so they i mean uh, so first of all the agencies are very much required to do the uh, evaluation and everything you know so so uh, if a sponsorship is something you know which is uh, which you believe in and you know uh, you should buy that sponsorship first of all you know 
there are lots of sponsorship which comes as come as a push and you know like uh, just mentioned about uh, uh, the back end uh, this thing you know uh, uh, this thing with the broadcaster so those kinds of kind of sponsorship we should sense very very quickly and uh, should stay away from those and uh, there are plenty of them uh, floating around in the market so those ones are uh, very very uh, expensive and you know the evaluation will never be fair for those however you know uh, things like you know a uh, uh, small things like you know uh, costing of a logo or costing of a uh, uh, what's coming on the screen those kind of things should not be uh, looked at you know one should not put a value to it you know because that's that's the reason why you're giving so much of uh, money why you're committing a huge chunk of money so agency's role is very very important i mean uh, uh, but the agency has to be fair in doing this and in my experience uh, at least uh, going by my agency my agency has been uh, very very fair in uh, doing evaluation because they understood the way we work uh, but you know uh, there is there's always there's always a fear that you know they could uh, push something which uh, may not work so you have to keep your eyes and ears open for that i i believe there are going to be a lot of agency guys uh, channel guys who are going to watching our show today and there's a lots to take from them in the perspective of what to look at it and what not to look at it so i will end one end the entire panel discussion with one question to each one of you uh, it's the googly question which i have just brought in while listening to all of you guys it's about if you as a brand uh, want to associate uh, in the next 6 months with one one of the sponsorship type be it cricket be it live event be it a gc show or something like that what would be your choice uh, keeping your brand uh, you know guidelines into consideration brand affordability into consideration what would be your choice and why i mean i will start with samyukta if that's okay i think uh, neil it was a googly question so i'm just going to respond by saying i think they're living in very strange uncertain times right now so uh, i think very difficult to preempt what's going to happen 6 months down the line as much as we would all love to have our aop plans locked in and know exactly what we're going to be doing i don't think uh, any one of us is there as yet because every day the markets are changing the market opens up shuts down within 10 days uh, so i don't think to be very 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 uh, candid and honest i don't think uh, right now sponsorship in the next 6 months will be a way to go especially with live events etc unless uh, things dramatically change which would be wonderful if it does happen uh, then why not um, and safety measures are like up there you know like if an event were to happen and people how do you know do prioritize getting out i mean these are all they just seem like such uh, you know things that we just took for granted i don't know when it's going to happen next um so honestly i don't see in the next 6 months any kind of sponsorship tie ups happening but of course if things change uh, why not thank you sabda sorry for the googly question but you know i will rephrase the question so that i don't get the same months from everyone that in the next 6 months we're not going to get sponsorships because of the budget cuts so if you have to uh, if you do not have budget constraints and what will what will be your brands uh, uh, keeping your brands consideration and brands imagery and the brands guidelines into consideration what is the type of sponsorship you would want to get into it hitesh if is if you or samyukta if you want to change your answer i'm happy to look at that also consideration I don't think my answer is going to change, Neil. Like I can't play God. <laughs> so it's okay, not. Okay, then I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, no worries. I'll go to Hitesh. Hitesh. Yeah. Hitesh, you have any specific choice of sponsorship in the next coming months? Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, reducing the spin on the googly, uh, <laughs> if I can, if I may say so. But uh, well, you know, uh, 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 as young brands, uh, uh, we we strive for we we live in uncertainty. um we live uh, we li- we, li- we live uh, you know two years at a time as we would put it uh, and uh, we break that up in four quarters to answer your question how would we live for the next two quarters uh, the the channels we will look for where consumers are consumers are glued on to if it is if it is to do with music uh, if it is to do with uh, mouth entertainment uh, at a very macro Uh, uh, the way, way the way we think about 
Yum Lane is, is you know, we're not really op- uh, uh, a pizza, momo, etc. company. We, we look at it as a mouth entertainment. Uh, people aren't getting access to live shows. People aren't get, getting access to experiences. Uh, so we, we will take the mouth entertainment as the, as the umbrella concept and, uh, and look for properties in and around that. Uh, profit is we are already trying. Uh, uh, and yes, uh, to, to one of the earlier panelists question, uh, you know, uh, the point made was, uh, will we go, will we, will we think out of the box uh, and, and, and go after certain, certain digital IPs? Uh, yes, certainly. I think that's what uh, that's what really gives us, uh, uh, you know, uh, gives us our mojo because the next six months is is when you know the 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 bigger marketing uh, CMOS on this plan, panel are going to watch out. Uh, so so it's it's also about uh, you know capitalizing on the momentum. Uh, thank you. I think from uh, no sponsorship scenario to sponsors largely into uh, experiential, which you mentioned. Uh, let me go to Rajiv and Jai Kishan, who has a huge kitty of media budgets. Uh, and uh, let me let me talk to uh, Rajiv. What's your perspective if you want to go ahead and pick up uh, your choice of sponsorship in the next six months? Just remind you that there are a lot of uh, TV channel guys going to listen to you and they're going to chase you push that. So go ahead. First, that. All, first of all, there are no, there are no big budgets. Okay. Okay. So, so that's a, that's a bit. So there, there are no big budgets, and uh, and, the, and the and the times are very very tough right now for everyone. I mean, uh, one is going through a very tough uh, phase of uh, life, one which one has never experienced in life, and uh, so same uh, rule applies to everybody. I mean, the rule rule which applies to us uh, from consumers, uh, same rule applies to uh, the sponsorships as well. You know. So sponsorships are going to be very very difficult decision to make because uh, uh, you know committing something for a long term for a period of three months to six months to a year yeah. is going to be very difficult because you know one is living uh, for the day uh, one day at a time because things are changing very fast and uh, you know I mean a city like Bombay you look at you know one day it shuts one day it is an, it opens up you know and uh, uh, scenario is very very tough for everyone, you know. So even though there there are sponsorship choices will be available, but the decision making for the sponsorship is going to be very tough, depending on what what ROI and uh, what ultimately is going to give me in return. So that's what will decide uh, the fate of sponsorships in the coming times. Thank you, Raju. Jay Kishan, your final thoughts on the last question of the day. Okay, I think everybody is shying in terms of giving any uh, options, but I'll just make it upfront. You know, if I was given option of taking a sponsorship uh, six months down the line, for me, option one would be uh, like a program like ABC, uh, high involvement, uh, everybody or the entire family watches it and stuff like that. You have ample opportunities for your brand plugs and everything. The second uh, show that I would love to kind of get associated with is uh, uh, a couple. Uh, again, uh, family show, uh, everybody watches it and some of the integrations kind of happen very seamlessly. And for the channel guys who are watching it, boss, deliverables may decide karunga, paise bhi may decide karunga. Ye dono shows, agar bechne to aana mere paas. And that's a perfect ending to whoever was expecting a lot to come from Jai Kitchen. Uh, thank you very much guys. I think uh, it was very well said that, you know, sponsorships are important. But by the next six months, budgets are going to be really crucial. ROI is going to be really crucial. So the job of making and deciding what sponsorship will become tougher at brand's end. Having said that, uh, I would like to thank each one of you for spending time today. And uh, yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Neil, and all our panelists for the insightful session. Our audience will certainly appreciate all the valuable inputs and will try to implement them in their business.